All right, so in the last video, I actually forgot to cover one very small detail regarding functions, but essentially let's pretend you have this private function that says add numbers and it takes these parameters, which is number one, number two, and a message. And they all have default values such as 10, 20, and hello. But let's go and call it. So we're gonna go add numbers. Now, if you just go one, 10 and enter the string, you will have to do them in order. But another way to add the argument that you desire is just to write whatever the argument is named and write message equals hello. And that will save you the trouble of having to define all of these before you get the message. And you can actually do this in any order you want. If you want to define N1, you can also do it later. And that's just a very nice tip for saving time if you just want to change the value of one of these parameters. But anyway, let's just get rid of that. And let's move straight on to recursion, which is actually going to be quite a confusing topic, but I will do my best to simplify it. And to get started, we're gonna create a very simple function called recursion example. So let's get started immediately by doing that. Private function recursion example. And it's gonna take an input of type int. And finally, it's going to return an int. But let's get started immediately inside here by writing a return statement. So it's gonna be return if n is equal to one. And it's very important you add one of these statements so you can actually exit the recursion because if you have an infinite recursion, for example, you will definitely generate an error. So we'll do private function infinite recursion. And then we will print line infinite loop. And at the end of this, we will call infinite recursion. So as you can see, this will create this, which will create this one more time and it will create this and it will go on forever and it will never end and it will create a lot of errors. Let's just comment this part out for now so we can run the program and I can show you what I mean. We will type in infinite recursion and we will click on run. And as you can see, it immediately generated an error. The first thing the program tried to do is print out this infinite loop for an infinite amount of times but eventually you arrive to the error, which is gonna say exception in thread main, and you will get this stack overflow error. And that's because we tried to loop it far too fast, far too many times. So this is usually an error you will encounter when you try to use recursion. And that's why we are including this safety mechanism that tells it to stop at a certain point. Let's just uncomment that and let's close this and get rid of that. So let's continue with our function recursion example. So if return if n is equal to one, we want to first print line the total. So it's gonna be n and we're gonna add a backslash and n to provide a new line. And then under that, we're gonna write print line recursion has ended because if we arrive to this n equals one, that will be the final condition before we exit from this recursion and we will return the final value of n. Else we want to print n with a plus symbol immediately after it. And this is just for presentation purposes. This will be the final symbol that is printed before we get the result. And we will return n plus recursion example. And this time we want to decrement the number by one. So each time this loops, we decrement it by one. It will do the calculation again. Then it will loop again. It will go back here, but with a minus one. And as soon as n turns into one, we can finally exit out of this recursion and that would be the most simple way I can put a recursion example. But let's actually play this program so you can see what it does. And we will enter the integer five as an argument. And let's tap on play. And actually before I continue, I forgot that this should be wrapped in a print line statement. So we're just gonna write print line because this is actually an expression in the end. So it's very important we print the final answer. So first of all, it's gonna print all of this nonsense and then it's gonna print the final answer of what we got there. So when we click on play, you'll see it says five plus four plus three plus two plus one and then it will say recursion has ended and the sum of all those numbers will be 15. So that's, I mean, this can easily be accomplished with a for loop, but this is the most basic example I have of how to use recursion. And if we put large numbers such as 50, you'll see it will calculate all of those numbers and it will give us the final answer down here as soon as the recursion has ended. So you got 50 plus 49 plus 48 plus 47, all the way down to, to one. And you can definitely use this for other things like Fibonacci numbers, but I have not used this for anything yet. I feel for Android development, it might be quite unnecessary, but it's always good to know 
that you can use this for something in the future in case it just happens to be the only way to do something. But uh, with that being said, thanks for watching this video. If it was useful to you, please consider leaving a like. But that's all for now. See you guys.